Shalom, everyone, and welcome back to the Heavenly Sword. So today I want to discuss this uh, whole thing that goes on with the yod he wah -He, or as modern Hebrews like to call it, yod he vah -He, and they tra transliterate in English as uh, Y-H-W-H or Y-H-V-H. And I'm going to discuss why people have so many different pronunciations of that name. So some people call him Yahuwah, others call him Yahawa or Yahweh, uh, Yehovah or Jehovah, which is what the Jehovah's Witnesses call him, unfortunately. And I just want to set apart the confusion, just settle all this and show you why I think this is nothing to, you know, none of these uh, pronunciations are correct. And I want to first show you this verse in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, for Ahia is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And yes, Ahia is his true name, and I'm going to show you, and I'm going to give you the reason why in just a second. Uh, but I want to, for those that are calling him Yahuwah or Yahawa, uh, you know, first of all, why are you debating? Why are you debating so much over the name? Because he is the because he is the author of peace, not of debates. And second of all, uh, he is also not the author of confusion. Why am I still confused? You know, by the time when I was researching the Yod Hey Wah -He, and other people are calling him by. Uh, the Jehovah or Yehovah or Yahuwah, you know, I was getting more and more confused because people had so many reasons to believe in one name and the other, and many reasons to believe in the other name, and they all just made sense. But it just didn't it just didn't fit right. And Ahaya was not supposed. To, and I just felt confused by the the whole uh, pronunciation, and I just don't understand. You know, I still had my faith because I knew he wasn't the author of confusion, and therefore wasn't supposed to, and I shouldn't be debating this in my mind. So and neither should anyone else. So I'm just gonna show you exactly what is wrong with all these pronunciations. Exactly. They all have one thing in common. So uh, I wanna get to this verse here. Um, so anyway it says this and when Aaron saw it he built an altar. This is the KJV by the way. So excuse the pagan terms that I'm about to say. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Okay, and the capital L-O-R-D is often transliterated from the word Yehovah. And according to Blue Letter Bible, Yehovah and the Strong's Concordance, Yehovah is the Jewish traditional name of our Creator. And you can find that in Strong's H-3068 right here. And for those that use that name, of course, I'm afraid, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not judging you or criticizing you for using it, but rather trying to get, you know, trying to uh, shed a new light and for, that way you can do your own research and see for yourself. But, you know, at the same time, I'm showing you my research. Anyway, the one thing I want to talk about is there's a, a further verse in this. Uh, after this, they were making the golden calf. And Ahia does not did not like what they were doing. He told Moshe that, and that was at, after the Ten Commandments were proclaimed. That's a, you can find the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter twenty. Um, so, you know that uh, what they were really doing is something that wasn't right. Okay, um, yeah, because like. When they said the Lord, you know, they always, you know, Lord is always transliterated from this false name of our creator, okay? But, you know, some, but this is the confusion that the King James Bible has caused. And, yeah, that's why you shouldn't put your entire trust in the KJ, KJV, okay? You should put your entire trust in the Most High and his original language because his original language has the true uh has the true name, has the true words, true laws, and therefore they should be, you know, you know, they should take, you know, they should be trusted entirely. And here's the problem with this word right here. It, it you know, Jeho Jehovah, of course, as I've said, is the Jewish national name of our Messiah, of our Creator. Sorry, our our Messiah's name is Yeshaya, and so I'm here in Exodus chapter. 3 verse 13, I'm going to start there, and Moshe said unto Al-Ahayim, Al-Ahayim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Yasharala, which is Israel, and shall say unto them, The Ayasha of your, Ohe of your fathers, 
hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And uh, and Allah Ahayam said unto Moshe, Ahaya Asher Ahaya, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Yasharala, Ahaya has sent me unto you. And, you know, <laughs> that's... And Allah said moreover unto Moshe, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Yasharala, Ahaya Ayasha, O hey of your fathers, the Ayasha of Abraham, the Ayasha of Isaac, and the Ayasha of Jake, O hey of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. That should be that should be enough to show you that Ahaya is the name that we should call upon. That it that it's the name we should remember for eternity. It's an eternal name and therefore couldn't, shouldn't be forgotten. Why are people, why did people forget it? Why are they calling him by the pronunciation yod he wah That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to get to, I'm going to show you how wrong this name is, but first I'm going to scroll down to 32, uh, Exodus 32 verse 5 just to show you uh, a little more of what was going on and what they were worshiping later, but like, uh, but anyway, I'm going to get back to that in a sec. I just want to first show you exactly what the term Hova really means, okay? Now, Hova is where we get Yahovah or Jehovah, uh, yeah, and it comes from the you know Hebrew term Hava, and I'm going to just uh, get back to, you know, kind of just scroll back this way, you know, and just Sorry, you know, I know it's moving the screen a little bit, but you know, I, I, that's just something I do. Uh, but anyway, here it is right here. Um, Hova, it actually, is, the definition for Hova is a ruin or disaster, and therefore our creator should not have that name. It shouldn't be Hova. It shouldn't be Hawa, okay? Hoa or whatever. You know, it's it's supposed to be you know, it shouldn't represent a disaster because Ahaya is the author of peace and not confusion or disaster or anything like that. So, and here you can see the the other transliterations or pronunciations right here, which is which could be Hoa, okay? And we'll just look at the, another form of, uh, for ruin is Hava, okay? So I'm going to look that up and, yeah, d um, Destruction is another is a term for it. Okay, desire, chasm, destruction. Yeah, that's not that's definitely not our creator here. Okay, and this is something you want to you could look at other uh, pronunciations like hawat, hawa. You know, or you know, without the v, you know, it would because there was no v sound back then. It would be pronounced hawa. You know, hawa. That's not something you'd want to you know, use, right? So in the AS, NASB translation, it was considered calamity, cal uh, craving, deadly, desire, destruction. Oh, you name it. That's a lot. So yeah, that's definitely not the right term to use. And, you know, especially Yahuwah or anything, you know, it just, uh, it's, it's definitely not the right way to use it. And, yeah, that's just what I want to show you here. So I'm going to get back to the Ayasha scriptures, okay? And because I want to show you what is, what was the, what were the Israelites really worshiping? Um, so I'm going to show you in just a sec. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah, Lord, God, YHWH, yod he wah yod he vah Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, goes on. Okay, and they rose up early on the mar, and of course that's why they crossed it out, because it wanted to be, these names are meant to be blotted out. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Ahiah said unto Moshe, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf. That's what, you know, that's the name of Jehovah, okay? That's they, that's the image of Jehovah that they, you know, carved, okay? And have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Yasharala, 
Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt. Uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of sick, you know. And you could see the molten, ca you know, the molten calf image in Wall Street at New York. That's you, you could see that today, yeah, because these, you know, there are still pagans out there that worship the calf, um, which of course is a symbol to Jehovah. And Jehovah, of course, is another term for Baal. And if you look at the term for Baal, okay, um, I'm just going to try to, you know, ba you know uh, just search it in here in this uh, Strong's. It should show up in there. Excuse me. It just, like, sometimes doesn't really. Uh... Here, let's try this one. Okay. My bail. Okay, there we go. Um, so it's a uh, you know, it's a symbolic name for Yah. Okay, if you ever heard of the name Yah, it's where you'll it's uh, pronounced Jah in the King KJV, which of course we all know that the letter J does not even ex did not even exist at the time the uh, first edition of the King James version was published. So. Uh, it's from the term Baal with pro, uh, pronouns sufficient, and Yah comes from Jehovah, or, you know, Yehovah, or whatever. Um, yeah, that's like, uh, this is, and you can see that in the Strong's Dictionary as well, in the uh, Strong's Concordance. And I'll show you a little bit of my notes so you can get a little idea, and so I can also remember what I've said. Um, and these are different links here. And... Let's see here. I just, you know, I just, yeah, there we go. Bailey, which is a Strong's 11, H 1180, is a symbolic name for Jehovah, rooting from the term Baal, which is in Strong's H 1167, to which is the phone, to, you know, to which the Phoenician deity, Strong's H 1168, got its name. So you can, you can look that up yourself, okay? You could even, you can order the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and look at it yourself. I, you know, don't take my word for it. Just really look it up, and okay. So I'm gonna show you. A, you know, I'm gonna get back to the Ayasha part where he made a proclamation of his, where the, uh, Ahaya made a proclamation of his name, and the name, of course, uh, go. It said, you know, Ayasha, of course, that is similar to the name Yeshaya, and he said in the in the and Yeshaya did say that he came in his father's name, and. That, you know, and of course, if he came in his father's name, it has to sound similar to hit the name of his father, which is Ahaya Yeshaya. Get the get the you know, does does it like uh, fit in the puzzle here? Does it is that the puzzle piece that fits to you? I hope so. So, um, anyway, I'm gonna show you, and I highly recommend getting the uh, Yasha Ahaya Bible Scriptures Aleph Tav because it has so many. It also has the Pagan terms in the end that have been removed, and it show and he uh, show, tells us why he removed these pagan terms and switched them into the true original terms here of our Creator and our Messiah and all that because this is you know he does a really good job with it. Uh, and as I said here, um, Baal, Bailey, Bold, Jehovah, it's actually uh, something a little uh, new, I, uh, just something just what I said here. A symbolic name for Jehovah, symbol is Baal, the bull, uh, i.e. a golden calf. Matthew 6, 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Ahia and Mammon, which of course is money. It's amazing that the bull is called Jehovah, which is what delivers uh, be believers think is the Father. The Yasat scriptures uses Ahia for the Father. So yeah, and also the term Jesus is a pagan term that's been blotted, you know, crossed out in the Bible because that shouldn't have been put in the Bible in the first place. Um, okay, so I mean that's not exactly what I want to show you, but I want to show you exact, you know, a little more of what I've found okay and yeah okay so i, I want to show you the hallelujah scriptures hurricane and it talks about it says in here we are about to email you this message below when we were informed that the hurricane ca this is what the uh hallelujah scriptures uh, the uh, the writer of the uh the translator of the hallelujah scriptures said 
is about to hit Puerto Rico. The last one was diverted with all the prayers. Do you put forth? We are told this one will hit hard, and we need your prayers. We are asking if tomorrow one is to hit Puerto Rico. Do you to fast tomorrow when it hit before when it is to hit Puerto Rico. Please pray and or fast for 24 hours if you can. This is a very serious matter, and we are before uh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, um, Yahweh. Yehovah for a miracle. As you know, our main warehouse in Puerto Rico, the blah, 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 blah. And of course, it says this right here in the bottom. And the, you know, the translator of this script, of these scriptures right here has said so much for prayers for Yehovah, Yahweh, whatever. A hurricane still knocked out power to all of Puerto Rico. His name is Ahaya. So, and this is the part where it says Ayasha, which is uh, very similar to the Messiah's name right here. And that's where, of course, the, you know, and John uh, chapter 5, verse 43, it says, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Oh, man. Amon. Thank you, Father. All right. Um, so, I'm going to get to... Okay, we all know that Lord is definitely a term for Baal, a master, hence a husband, Lord, which is why the scriptures has removed Lord, and the title Lord is applied to all heathen deities if the word God is not used for them. And I'm going to you know, I'm going to research a little more about that and just talk about it in another video. Um, okay, now I'm just going to I'm going to keep scrolling down here and just until I absolutely find it. Um, okay. Okay, the, so it's just the next, I just, I just hope everyone is awake from this and just really, uh, you don't have to believe me, you don't have to, uh, or, you know, it's, you know, you have every right not to believe me, at, at least by, based on state law, of course, but obviously if you call on these names you're calling on a demon like okay there it is right here yahuwah okay it's one that okay ten what he claims is ten thousand percent proof uh you know these names right here is a satan okay and you can and he gives pretty good sources here too uh you never knew about the name yahweh and there was no letter u in the alphabet well that's not the entire story there was a sound for the letter we call u but it didn't look like u it looked like v the classical Latin alphabet had only 23 letters, not the 26 that we have today. This is why the W looks like a double V, but is pronounced like a double U. Hmm, something I learned. Uh, something new that I just learned. Uh, thank Ahaya for that. First in the 1500s, Italian printers uh, started distinguishing between the value U and the consonant V. However, the V continued to be used for the U sound at the beginning of words. In 1629, the capital U became an accepted letter when Lazar Zetzner, a printer, started using it in his print shop. So, Yahva, which is also Yahava, Yah means Egyptian moon god, and Hava means destruction. Two U's or V's you need to be aware of. Hava, short definition, destruction, or H1961, Haya, C1942, uh, NAS Exhaust and Concordance, page 15. I don't have that, but you know, it says it means calamities, calamity, craving, deadly desire. And I think I just. Uh, I just, uh, you know, actually showed you this in the in the Bible Hub website. Uh, so uh, that we must remember that the Hebrew has no vowels, which is hava or destruction. The Tetragrammaton worshippers have moved from one name to the next, looking for salvation, and therefore we now know that Yahusha is not the true name because that's just the uh, their way of trying to, uh, you know, they're just, you know. <laughs> uh, it's just their way of uh, basically trying to, attempting to make it sound similar to this false name. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it, but there is no you found. They want to try to make the Messiah have the same name as the Tetragrammaton. Yeah, so I, I absolutely agree with him on this one. So mm, I, I think there's nothing more I have to say here. You know, I just think this is enough to show you that this is... Definitely, that yeah, Yahuwah or Yahweh, you know, these are not the names that we should call upon. Ahia, there's no confusion by the name Ahia because Ahia is his true name. He is the Father, the Creator of our world. He's the Creator of us. He is the Creator of 
every all the food that we eat, even though of course, you know, the food that we eat now that's you know being cre uh, created by the creations, and they're basically putting some uh, weird substances in our food that's causing mental illnesses, cancer, and all that. Uh, they're also telling us it's okay to eat pork, even though I heard from my brother yesterday that pork is one of the number one causes of cancer, or so that's what they're studying. Um, Anyway, I'm going to share with you more, maybe, I'm, I'll probably share with you more as to the name of our Messiah. I mean, I know I made a video about this, but I think I want to tell you more about Yeshia and his true name, because we're, we're living in a time of confusion right now. We think that, um, you know, people, you know, pagan, not only are the pagan terms being used and, um, I wouldn't say Christians, but people, followers, uh, who think people who think they're following our Messiah, they are basically tricked into using pagan terms and calling on pagan names. So not only are they tricked into using pagan names, but the pagan gods or pagan deities are actually being promoted heavily on social media, on television, all that. You know, uh, you can see our uh, uh, false idols on television. Uh, you know, on those celebrities that you worship, that not maybe not you personally, but like uh, so many people around the world, they're worshiping. They're making statues out of them. They're you know they're dressing up like them. And of course, the in the recent Met Gala, you uh, you could tell that those uh, you know that those celebrities at, at the Met Gala they were dressing like ancient, you know, they were basically dressing up like modern Egypt or something. I mean, one, uh, Billy Porter was dressed up like a feminine sun god. Uh, he, I mean, he was the same person that wore the tuxedo dress at the Oscars. So, I mean, yeah, uh, he's, ba you know, he's basically embarrassing himself once again and just making him look, ma making himself look ridiculous. I'm sorry, and uh, you know, I understand that you, uh, some of you that are watching might worship him, but that is the truth. He has completely humiliated himself just looking like this and just making really he wants it seems like he's trying to make a false example out of people but in reality he's making he's just a complete embarrassment i mean i just i mean yeah pray that he repents yeah you know that's what you do for others you, you know all that's what you do for others if you see them but of course they already made their choice so i mean it's you know you you can't just pray for them if you you know if you feel have hard feelings for someone yeah you pray for them but like um, if you but the problem is they just you know a high I can't take away their free will it's just that's just the way it is they made that choice so anyway if you, uh, I thank you very much for listening to my show if you have any questions or comments feel free to post them in the comments section if you would like to subscribe to my channel click on the subscribe button and even click on the bell if you'd like to be notified of a new episode uh, I thank you again for watching I hope everyone has a good day and uh, also I want to make make it very clear we uh, just uh, I just hope that everyone follows our creator Ahi our creator Ahia and his son Yeshaya and that everyone has a good day and shalom.